Hey everyone, welcome to this video. This is Pazarine and today we are building again in The Sims 4. So a few weeks ago, I asked you guys what kind of tutorial you'd like me to do first. And by first, I mean I intend to make all three of these as they are the most highly requested tutorials in my channel, but I wanted to know which one you'd like to see the most. And overwhelmingly, it looks like plenty of you guys want to know how you can create the perfect floor plan. So we're going to do exactly just that. But before anything else, I just want to say it's been pretty amazing to see so many new people watching my videos lately, so thank you so much for that. And if you're new to this channel, welcome! My name is Sharina, I'm an aspiring interior designer, and I spend way too much time playing The Sims. I mostly do stop motion speed builds, but I also do tutorials. So if you're into that, please do consider subscribing. So today we are learning how to create the perfect floor plan in The Sims, or at least what can be considered efficient and realistic given the limits of the game. And I know what you're thinking, it's just The Sims. Half of the time, it doesn't even make sense. Why does it matter where I put the bathroom or the toddler's room? Honestly, if you're someone who wants to build better homes and design nicer interiors, space planning can be incredibly helpful. I'm sure many of us struggle where to place bathrooms and kitchens and offices. This is why giving yourself time to plan things out is necessary, especially if you want to save time and effort. And of course, so we can improve in building, especially in interior design. I also kind of want to reach out to those who aspire to become architects and designers someday and play The Sims for fun as practice. It's an excellent tool in my opinion and growing up, The Sims games helped a lot in influencing my career choices. But before we get into it, full disclaimer, I may have studied interior design but I am in no means a professional yet. I'm working on it. I do deal with floor plans a lot and as an avid player, I understand that The Sims is just a game and it has its limits too. So nothing too technical because let's not forget, we're just building homes for pixel people and the game isn't as fleshed out as to include structural integrity, plumbing standards, health and safety considerations, etc. Because if they were, I don't think I would be in the right place to talk about these. Also, we will only be tackling residential lots for now because community and commercial lots are more diverse and may require tutorials of their own. On that note, this video is not only a tutorial but also a personal build challenge. I'll be introducing three different ways you can plan for your floor layout and I'm going to build one starter home with each method. So this is gonna be a very interesting experience. Anyways, let's begin. Before we build a house or design an apartment, it's good to ask ourselves these questions first. Who is gonna live in it? How many people? What kind of personalities do they have? Do they have dogs or cats or kids? Are they occult sims? Do they have hobbies that you need special room for? All these questions are helpful in determining the size and style of the home. If you can imagine scenarios or write a story in your head, it would also make it a lot easier too. If you want to keep it vague, that's fine. Many pre-made homes are made to cater to different people regardless of their personalities, but they do have an idea of what kind of residence they'd envision living there, like a family, or a single bachelor, or a retired couple, etc. Once you've decided on that, the next thing you need to ask is, what kind of architecture slash interior design style are you going for? Try to base it on your sim's personalities and aspirations too. Most builders would choose between modern and traditional, and these are blanket terms that you can definitely use as a basis. You can likewise be more specific. If you have Dream Home Decorator, you can have your sims like a specific type of decor and cast. You can filter that in the build and buy mode as well. Note that different interior design styles can have different layouts depending on their characteristics and beliefs. If you can, do some research especially when it comes to historical styles or international styles. Lastly, and this is optional, where are you building it? Sometimes it's good to adhere to a building style of a particular world or a district. Though this is optional because you can be as creative as you'd like. It could just be your guide when it comes to orientation and perhaps even the ambiance. and as I mentioned earlier, I'll also be introducing three ways you can plan for your floor layout, some of which you're probably already familiar with. The first is recreating an existing floor plan. Yes, literally just grab a floor plan online or if you have one lying around or if it's in a magazine, 
There's a lot of pre-made floor plans out there and if you're a beginner, this is helpful in understanding the flow of a house. Learn how to make your own observations too. Also, I am aware that real-life floor plans can be intimidating and the sizes can be confusing to translate in The Sims, which is why I recommend you check out Rolo's floor plans on Instagram. They make pre-made floor plans for Sims 4 builds that you can make yourself in-game. What makes them pretty great is that they use the squares in the grid as a unit of measurement. This corresponds to the grid you see on a lot. They've made floor plans with furniture layouts for different lot sizes, so do check out their Instagram if you want to give it a try. Speaking of grids, our second method is to use a grid when you plan for a floor layout. Basically, we're just gonna do the same thing Rolos did, except we're gonna do it ourselves. You can definitely do this in game, but you can also make these on grid paper or on a spreadsheet. I've seen many builders do this before they build, and I think it's an excellent time saver. It's also pretty useful if you're offline and you're just making plans to build something. Again, just like what Rolos floor plans does to make their floor plans, the squares in the grid correspond to the squares in a lot. So you can have a visual aid on how large a room will be. Lastly is when you don't have grid paper or don't feel like using a spreadsheet but you still want to plan a build anyways. You can try making a bubble diagram. So what exactly is a bubble diagram? It's basically a drawing that utilizes shapes to plan the layout of your space. Usually you make use of ellipses or circles, but I've seen people use random shapes as well. So the bigger the circle, the bigger the room is on the plan. Sometimes arrows are used to indicate adjacency or where the door is, and there are many ways you can create a bubble diagram. It all depends on you and how you're gonna interpret it. I'm gonna demonstrate how to do each of these later before we build. Of course, for the first one, I'm just gonna grab the floor plan from Rolos and create them in The Sims. I'll be building three starter homes, each of which I will create using one of the methods for planning that I mentioned. Of course, the purpose of this video is how to create a better floor plan and it would make more sense if I gave you actual tips. Which means it's time we talk about how you can arrange rooms efficiently and this is where zoning comes in. It's basically just grouping rooms together according to function. There are four types of zones in interior design. These are the social zones, work zones, private zones, and storage zones. Social zones are where most people in their homes would converge like the living room and the dining room. Work zones usually involve a lot of mechanical activity and these spaces may or may not be necessarily be private like offices and kitchens. Private zones are spaces that are intimate and are usually where the occupants can find comfort away from others. Examples are bedrooms and bathrooms. Lastly, storage zones are literally just for storage. They're usually tied or adjacent to one of the three zones I mentioned earlier. Examples include the pantry for the kitchen and the walk-in closet for bedrooms and bathrooms. Some rooms can be classified into more than one zone. I say the kitchen is both part of the social and work zones and an office can also be in a work zone as well as a private zone depending on what kind it is. So how does this help you build better interiors? Firstly, you now have an idea of how to group rooms together. Private zones are usually in one area and away from the noise of social zones, or at least their entrances are. And work zones are supposed to be made more accessible, and it's a given that people will also frequent these spaces, especially if it's also kind of a social zone like a kitchen. The space planning process recognizes which areas and functions are to be interrelated. That is to say, in a well-designed space, activities should flow smoothly and effectively from one zoned area into another. I also personally like to group rooms in areas that have plumbing or have water sources, whether they are beside each other or one story above. But this is the sim, so plumbing considerations don't really count. It's just a thought though, and if you want to create a realistic layout, you can try doing the same thing. It's also a guide on where you can place bathrooms and kitchens if you're having trouble in a space. Adjacency is key to these areas. So now you have an idea of how to group rooms, we're gonna apply it to our diagrams. But first, I'll be recreating an existing floor plan made by Rolos, and then we can try the other methods afterwards. Okay, so this is our first build, and we are building on a 20 by 15 lot in Willow Creek and the method we're using is grabbing a floor plan that is existing and I decided to get this one from Rolo's Instagram. So I personally chose this because I kind of like the layout, but I'm just gonna build this tile for tile. So this is like the bedroom and beside it is the bathroom and there's another bedroom right here. So one, two, three. 
So I'm just going to draw everything first and then we'll walk through how I'm going to do the layout afterwards. So this is going to be a Spanish Revival style home and right now I think I'm just going to advise you guys to ignore the doors I'm using because I just want to see where the doors are. Usually in architecture, they do like aligning their walls, but there's already some alignment here and then it's totally okay to have like some walls jutting out a bit. Although I would prefer if this was aligned. So I'm just gonna align that. This room is smaller than this one because I also want to establish which room is the master bedroom and which bedroom is just, you know, the bedroom. This is basically it. It's so fast. We still have 14,000 left so we can still furnish this efficiently. So this is the top view of Rolo's floor plan that we recreated in The Sims. So since it's a small house, a lot of the zones are just blending in together and I decided that I'm gonna furnish all of these homes that I'm gonna be making today off screen because it's gonna take a while and we'll be back after the short break. back looks like this house is unfortunately empty looking and i am so sorry about that this is a starter home i had to keep it within budget so like i said this house is a spanish style home and i just used base game but the important thing is that we were able to do the floor plan just okay and we were able to recreate everything from rolo's floor plan the kitchen was here dining room living room was here i just changed a few parts of it and this is the bedroom for the kid and this is the parents bedroom so that's it. If you guys want to download this, you can download this in the gallery and it's also in the description if you're interested. Let's move on to the next one. So this is a grid plan and this is the second method on how you can do space planning in The Sims 4. I'm on Excel and I made myself look squarish to look like the tiles in build mode. And I know some people would directly jump into build mode, but this is another method that you can try if you want a time saver or if you just want to see how rooms can be laid out without having to get in game. I've seen many builders do this and one time I've seen Plumbella do this when she did like the 10 minute build challenge. I'm gonna be building on a 20 by 15 lot and it's gonna be a two story house with two bedrooms. We are on a budget, we're trying to make it just 20k. I want all of the houses that I'm gonna be doing to be a starter home or at least, you know, very much affordable because we're gonna be focusing more on just the layout here, not much on the decor. The first thing I'm gonna do is place where the living room is and it's probably just gonna be here. I want it to be accessible to all the other rooms so it's gonna be near the dining room, it's gonna be near the kitchen and it's gonna be a place where you can also find the stairs. So most of the time I want my stairs to be in the living room because it's so that it's easier to spot and also the accessibility I like to think about that as well and this is gonna be the dining room and I want the kitchen to be at the back you can totally interchange these but the idea of me putting the kitchen at the back is I do want a back entry as well so I'm gonna establish that there's gonna be a porch here and there's also gonna be a porch here at the back so that your sim can just throw out the trash as easily as they could because you know most of the time when your sims eat or cook they wash the dishes in the kitchen and sometimes they have leftovers so they throw it in the trash can and then they take the trash from the trash can and throw it to the you know the actual the big trash can where all the waste disappears into so it's gonna be here at the back and there's gonna be a bathroom here i think it could fit a shower maybe it's not gonna be a big bathroom just horizontal layout there has to be like a small area where i'm gonna put the stairs so i'm just gonna make like an indication that this is where the stairs is gonna be i can fit like a couch here a couple here and the entry is here there's gonna be a chamber for where you're gonna put like the fireplace i know it's not really necessary in the sims but i do like to keep it as realistic as possible i think this is okay for the ground floor as you can see i have all the zones where there's a lot of socializing gonna happen it's it's not a big house so everybody can converge downstairs and it's just gonna be super private and quiet upstairs i think it's always good to have a bathroom on the ground floor even if it's just a powder room because it's kind of weird to have to ask your guests to oh you can use the bathroom in my room it's it's kind of weird uh, unless you're that close but you know how the welcome wagon comes in and they're like can i use your bathroom they just walk into the nearest bathroom so most of the time 
time the kitchen and dining is also beside each other you can have a kitchen and a dining room in separate floors but it's just gonna be awkward there should be as much as possible two entries to a house one at the front and one at the back it's also quite easy for your sims as well it will make it more convenient for them when they go out they don't have to go out the front door each time just to get to the back of the house i'm just gonna highlight where the doors are and the archways are and again the idea is just to know how each room is laid out in a space you can just make changes when necessary we're gonna do the second floor and i just want to establish the fact that i want an open to below stairwell we're just gonna copy paste this area right here this is the stairs and like i said i like having my bathroom stack one on top of each other or beside each other so i'm gonna place the bathroom right here and maybe it's gonna be a bit bigger this is the master bedroom i think the size is okay we can fit a bed here maybe in between grids and lastly the kids room i want there to be the kids room to be just right here i think it's already aligned with the dining room and there's only three tiles here so there's gonna be three tiles here maybe i'll tuck in the bed in this area so i think we're done with the second floor we're just gonna close this area as like the hallway so the doors are here the bathroom door is right here and there's gonna be again this for the chamber for the chimney or the <laughs> fireplace just that it goes all the way up the roof so now that we're done here and now that i'm very happy with the flow i hope we don't have to make too many changes but if we do it's fine we're gonna do it let's hop on in game and build this house all right so now that we are in game i just want to take a minute to show you guys this family made by my friend pink you can download them in the gallery i'll put a link again in the description for them if you're interested they're here basically to just play test a lot we're gonna base the decor on what they like so yeah let's begin i'm just counting the number of tiles we have for the living room and beside it is the dining room and we're gonna do the same for the kitchen i'm just gonna copy paste this and extend it by one more tile because it's a three by four room and at the back we have the bathroom that's about two by three and there's gonna be a little bit of a staircase here so i'm gonna delete this wall because we're gonna place a staircase there so this is our ground floor and i also placed like kind of a walkway patio thing so we're gonna move everything at the back again sometimes it doesn't matter where the room is placed the important thing is you know where the doors are you can see that the house kind of flows really well. There's a general area where all the rooms are connected. Zoning-wise, it's always good to group rooms together. In the second floor, we're gonna do the bedrooms. This is the bathroom right here. We're gonna adjust this later because I think it's just too big. So this is our layout. This is the top floor and this is the ground floor. We did follow the exact measurements in our Excel, but again, if you do this on grid paper in Excel and you think, oh, I just wanna see the layout and I wanna make changes in game, that's totally okay. I'm gonna be furnishing this off screen. So I'll be back later after a short break to show you guys the final look. Hi again and welcome back. This is the cottage already furnished and I think this is my favorite so far because cottage living does have very affordable items so I really could go all out with the starter home. I kept the layout as is, although I did make one significant change. There was kind of like a porch here, but I decided to just expand it so that the living room is quite larger. It's still within 20,000, so it still counts as a starter home. I used just the base game and cottage living. So there's a fireplace because I wanted it to be consistent as much as possible with the design that there's like a chamber here. And this kitchen is just super simple. There's not much decor because I am trying to stay within budget. Budget and there's really not much room for it so if you want to download this it is in the gallery my ID again is Pazarine and the link is all in the description let's move on to the next one so now that we're done with that build it's time for us to do the last type of diagram and that is a bubble diagram I'm currently in Adobe Photoshop but you could totally open MS Paint or any type of drawing software you can even grab a piece of paper to draw circles we're gonna be designing a mid-century modern bungalow and the layout is gonna be an open plan we're gonna try and recreate this house and we're gonna imagine the layout to be you know how we're gonna plan it in the bubble diagram I'm using the ellipse tool to just draw circles and I'm gonna indicate where the entry is and it's right here in front 
and if you've noticed the shape of my canvas it is gonna be my estimate for a 20 by 15 lot so the entry is just i'm gonna try and blend it with the living room I'm just gonna indicate where the entrance is so this is the living room and it is much larger than the entry i'll probably make it even larger later maybe smaller it totally depends it's just an estimate of the size and again i <laughs> like putting the dining room immediately right here and beside it is the kitchen right here and i want my bedroom to be here at the back and there's also gonna be a small bathroom behind the kitchen and here there's a space here i left here because i could imagine that there's gonna be like a hallway because i do want them to be able to access the bedroom and the bathrooms through that hallway and this is gonna be my exit like here to the back of the house where i'm gonna place a back door so this is basically your layout and i'm just gonna add arrows to indicate accessibility of the space like we're gonna pass by or pass through to get to this area to another so this is the arrow pointing to the living room so you can access the living room the entry and then the dining room the living room as well and also with the entry so it's a very open plan uh kitchen living basically the living room is gonna be connecting everything dining room is also very open and hallway and the living room as well can access the hallway and same with the bedroom and toilet bath it's a one bedroom bungalow and i'm really excited because i actually want to see how this looks like yeah that's what we're gonna do next we're gonna hop on our game and we are gonna build this house right here so now that we're done space planning using the bubble diagram we're gonna try and build that house we made in the sims so this again it was a sim made by my friend pink here to play test on the same lot we're gonna build them a house according to our diagram Firstly, we're gonna do the entry and this is gonna be the living room. It's not gonna be a very big one. I do want it to be connected to the kitchen. And there is a bedroom here at the back. But first, let's do like the hallway and there's a bathroom here. And the bedroom's quite small. So we're just gonna make adjustments while we go. Now that I think about it, I actually want like the living room to expand a bit more because I want the bedroom to be slightly bigger. I'm gonna be deleting walls such as this and this because it's gonna be an open plan we are gonna keep this for the bathroom maybe i'll move this forward make the bathroom a bit bigger yeah i guess this is good i'm just aligned walls so it's gonna be kind of a linear kitchen and this is the back entry i'm just gonna place doors that we can see i'm doing this thing again where i'm grouping like the wet areas in one place so i like tucking in my bathroom here at the back and where the kitchen is as much as possible at the back of the house although if you want to put it in front that's fine just as long as your dining room is a lot closer to where the living room is maybe and it doesn't have to be so accurate you're just trying to be precise when you're doing a bubble diagram so here's the top view of the house once more i'm gonna be furnishing this off screen and we'll be back after this short break <music> So welcome back. This is the mid-century modern home and I've made like a slight change. I think I moved one wall, this wall right here, because I wanted there to be kind of like an entry. And I actually used references for all my exteriors. Even with the interiors, I also use references. It's always good to have a reference, especially if you're learning. I followed the layout of the bubble diagram to a T as much as I could. The bathroom is here, kitchen, dining living and the bedroom and this is under twenty thousand, so it is a starter home let me know what you guys think of this so this is the bonus round and i decided to do penny pizzazz's apartment i'm gonna be renovating this because i realized that a lot of people would prefer to do the shell first and then just draw the walls of the interior it's not a bad looking apartment but it could use maybe an upgrade in terms of layout i do personally would prefer the bedroom here and like the bathroom here is fine but i move the kitchen here maybe in the living room here because it would make a lot more sense in my opinion it is a studio apartment but if you can turn it to a bedroom then why not so most of the time in apartments like in real life they already have a place where the kitchen is by default so if it's here it's really just gonna be there you're not really allowed to move it unless you have permission from the architect or the engineer and <laughs> same with the bathroom but this is the sims i can do whatever i want and i'm gonna move the kitchen over here 
So I just bulldozed the entire lot and I'm so sorry Penny. She was about to walk in the door but I'm like, I'm gonna destroy your house before you walk through the door. So anyways, I'm just gonna light it up so we can see. I just want to decorate it according to Penny Pizzazz's personality and her career. She is a social media influencer, I think. So she needs an area where she does her social media thing, like a tiny office maybe. So I did the bubble diagram off screen and I did have to take note about the fact that there's an unmovable elevator right here. So we can't move that. I already like where the bathroom was originally. So we're just going to build the bathroom wall again, which is right here. And beside it, I want there to be the kitchen. I don't have to draw walls for this, but for the sake of creating like a border, we're just gonna draw like this wall. Maybe expand the bathroom now because I don't want the kitchen to be too large. This is the living room and maybe it's also gonna be the office, but I want the bedroom to be right here. It's gonna be an open concept, maybe except for the bedroom. I, of course, I'm gonna be furnishing this off cam. I just wanna see if, you know, if, if it can fit. So yeah, this is what it's gonna be. Dining room here, kitchen here, living room here. Like I did in my bubble diagram and there's gonna be a bathroom here. So again, this is the top view. I'm gonna be furnishing this again off cam and we're gonna be back after the short break. So welcome back. This is the last build, I promise. And I'm super happy with how this turned out just as I am with the past few builds that I did recently, I decided to let go and not limit myself to using just one pack because I wanted to design this interior based on her personality. And around this time, the Blooming Rooms kit also came out. So you see a bunch of plants that you haven't seen before. That's from the kit. I decided to do like a boho style apartment and it's just super fun. I kept my original layout when I was doing the walls earlier and I really didn't do much changes anymore. The bedroom is here. Originally, this was a kitchen. Bathroom is still here. And the kitchen is here now. So yeah, if you want to download this, it's in the gallery. I uploaded this as a room. I'm really passionate about interiors and I think I like doing interiors more than exteriors in The Sims. It's just, it's just loads of fun. And I don't use CC for any of my builds. I am gonna use CC soon. I just want to explore every item because I haven't really explored all of it yet. So yeah. This is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to like and subscribe. And you can also follow me on social media. I have Twitter and Instagram. And if you have questions, I'll happily answer them. If you want to support me through donations, I also have a Ko-fi page. And I just launched memberships where you can subscribe monthly and enjoy exclusive rewards. I do plan to add more to my interior design series in the future. I already did one with color theory and want to expand more on that, so yeah. Please do let me know if you're interested in seeing more from me. So that's all. Thank you again, and I'll see you all next time. Happy building!